thought it was snowing. It's actually just the tree dropping its seeds on me. <laughs> okay, back to what we were doing. All right, everybody, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about vegan bodybuilding and how to do it on a budget, how to get your groceries and do it in a budget-friendly way. Figured I'd come outside. It's actually warmer outside than it is inside because our walls are made out of concrete. But yeah, I guess we're fortunate to have this space and the ability to garden, which is one of the ways to be budgeted. Basically, step one is to create a budget. Danny and I consistently spend $500 or less a month on groceries and we consume anywhere from six to 8,000 calories combined and we get in around 350 grams of protein combined and we eat nutritiously and we eat a variety of nutrient dense foods. So it really is possible to do this as long as you're smart about it. Step one is to buy in bulk. It's a little bit of an upfront investment and it may be hard to swing it, but if you buy certain foods in bulk like vital wheat gluten to make your vegan meats, nutritional yeast to keep your food nutritionally dense, and protein powder to make sure that you have something else that's cost effective that is dense in protein, like protein powder, you will be able to save a lot of money in the long run. The other thing to do is to think about the foods that are the most cost effective when you go for your grocery runs and to take fewer grocery runs. Especially right now, this is like the best time to do it because how often do you want to go grocery shopping and expose yourself, you know, when we should be really staying at home as often as possible for all non-essential things. So we used to grocery shop once a week and never shop in between our grocery runs. And now we've created a system where we only shop once every other week. Whether you do it weekly or bi-weekly, bottom line is it is important to only buy groceries when you go grocery shopping. So make a list, know what you need. The other thing is to not go grocery shopping when you're hungry. Wouldn't you know it, when you're hungry, you actually wind up buying things on impulse that you don't really need. And they're generally like things that are not nutritionally dense and that cost a lot of money. When you could be making stuff at home, which leads me to my next point. You can make all of your vegan meats and you can make all of your vegan cheeses at home. You can make things like sauces, your condiments at home, and you can make all other kinds of things at home like bread, for example. So the more things you can make on your own, the better. The other tip is, well, you know, making stuff is time consuming, right? Yes, once again, time and money, upfront investments that you can invest in yourself on to do things in a budgeted way in the future so that you don't wind up spending more money than you'd like to and you can still eat nutritiously. So the more time and the more money that you invest upfront into creating your systems and the more disciplined you are with them, the better your systems are going to be and the less you'll spend a month on groceries. So when you do make food at home, try to not just batch cook for the week, but try to batch cook for the next three weeks. Try to batch cook for the next month. The more that you can cook in advance, the less stressful it will be when it comes time to batch cook again. So me personally, what I like to do is I literally cook enough vegan meat to last for the month. And then when I'm about to, you know, have two weeks worth of my vegan chicken, my vegan burgers, and all these recipes are up on our YouTube channel, by the way, or at least a lot of them are. And you can find other recipes on our Vegan Proteins Academy, which I can link down below. The more of these things that you have in reserve, the less stressed out you're going to be. Next thing, when you're going on grocery runs, think of the foods that you want to shop for that have the most nutrient density, the most caloric bang for your buck, as far as micronutrients are concerned. We're talking rice, potato, beans for your carbohydrates. Also, when it comes to your vegetables, buying frozen is not a bad idea. You don't have to worry about the food spoiling and also it's flash frozen at its highest nutritive value and it actually is more cost effective to buy frozen vegetables than fresh vegetables. Not to say there's anything wrong with fresh vegetables. They're pretty tasty and nice to have to cook up. However, it's definitely a good idea to rely on frozen vegetables as well. When it comes to fruits, what you can do is focus on bananas for the, the bulk of your fruits because bananas are super cheap and we still wind up eating a variety of fruits and a variety of vegetables. We just focus on potatoes and bananas and frozen vegetables for the bulk of our produce and then we add some variety into the mix. So those are some of our trips when we go grocery shopping either weekly or bi-weekly like we are right now. And when it comes to healthy fats, nut butters tend to be more cost effective than regular nuts. Although I do recommend nuts and seeds and buying those in bulk too if you can because you'll need those to make your own vegan cheeses. So yeah, just to recap, buying in bulk, things would cost like one third to one fifth 
of the usual cost when you buy in bulk and you have them on hand and batch cook and cook as much in advance as possible so you always have something in reserve and you wind up keeping your systems shopping when you're not hungry and only buying foods when you go grocery shopping and finding what the most nutritionally dense foods are that also have the best caloric bang for your buck and actually there is an article that robert cheek wrote and if you go to veganstrong.com you could see a list of the most nutritionally dense foods that are also the most cost effective foods oh yeah and finally if you happen to be fortunate enough to have the space for it doing your own gardening and getting good at it so you have good yields is also a nice way to have fresh produce that is economical and that you can control the variables with and you can plant your own stuff basically and it's fun too it's a nice break from the screens so i'm gonna get back to it and do some gardening with danny but hope that you liked the video let us know if there's any other things that you want us to talk about if you like the video make sure to hit the like button and we'll be out there with more great stuff soon